GFGF is an artist and illustrator based in California, making accessible and functional art objects for the home and body. References to The Simpsons, Nike, and other pop culture tropes appear across her throws, paintings, and sculptures, which always add an edge of humor to the beauty and the craft. Well, today, Lillian will be telling us about a recent body of work that she exhibited, as well as a recent collaboration with, with Nike. Um, so Lillian, I'd ask you to please turn on your audio and video so we can actually say hi. How's it going? Um, good, how are you? I'm okay, thank you. Yeah, so are you, um, you're dialing in from, from the desert of California, is that right? Yes, I'm in Yucca Valley, California. Amazing. Um, well, listen, we're super excited to, to have you on. We are such big fans of your work. In fact, it's nice to see it in the background there as well. Um, but uh, I'm going to basically let you, you take it away and, and share your screen. And um, for anyone who's, who's watching and you have a question for Lillian while, this is, uh, while she's speaking, please put it in the chat and we'll, we'll get around to asking it afterwards. Okay, over to you, Lillian. Thanks very much. One second. How's that going? Uh, that's right. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Okay. We're thanks. in. All right. I'll, I'll leave you to it. <laughs> So again, hi everyone, thanks for listening. My name is Lillian Martinez, but people call me Lil. Um, I'm talking to you from my studio in Yucca Valley, California. So I'm a visual artist um, and I describe myself as that because um, my practice is sort of driven by making and creating images. I feel like this title is broad enough and at the same time specific enough to describe my practice. So that includes drawing, painting, designing, archiving, and sharing my work through photography. So I wanted to start off my, sorry, one second. I wanted to start off my, my talk with a quote that I read recently in a book called A Month in Siena by Hisham Matar. Uh, perhaps the entire history of art is the unfolding of this ambition, that every book, painting, or symphony is an attempt to give a faithful account of all that concerns us. So when I think about what concerns me in relation to my artwork, I think about representation, comfort, beauty, humor, and the art of living or as Noguchi called it, the architecture of living. These are things that I think about a lot. Uh, a little background about myself. Um, I studied photography in college at SAIC in Chicago. And photography was my first introduction into making work. Uh, it felt like the most accessible media, medium for me at the time. It felt like something that I could learn how to do, uh, but I, I was never quite satisfied with the work that I was making. I felt really restricted by reality, light, and perspective. So I started uh, painting and drawing seriously about five years ago. And when I say seriously, I don't mean that I had jobs or commissions. I mean that I was beginning to consider this a big part of my practice and I was actively trying to find ways to share and present my work. Um, this was a gradual revelation for me. I began to realize that I could create images and have total control. Growing up, I thought that artists were ordained with a gift at birth to be an artist, to be able to paint, draw, etc. cetera. Um, I didn't realize, I didn't realize at the time that that was also something that you could learn how to do. Um, in hindsight, I had a desire to make images, but I didn't know how to fully realize them. So I would say that I'm a late bloomer. Um, beginning to make this type of work was very healing for me. I felt really happy with the work I was making and I really felt like it allowed me to create a space for myself. 
Um, I think art allows me to communicate without using words. So I've created this visual language using color, form, and cultural signifiers. Uh, I like to explore variations on various themes that interest me. I don't conceptualize or rationalize the work that I make. Once the work is made and I share it, I feel like I have to take accountability for the images that I'm choosing to create. Um, so why do I choose to draw brown bodies? Tracing back my, per my personal history, I realized that it was about representation. I'm a brown woman making work about brown women. And I really want anyone that identifies as a BIPOC woman to see their beauty and strength mirrored back at them. And I want it to be a joyous experience for anyone that connects with the work. I want my work to be for anyone and everyone that can connect to it. Um, so earlier this year, I was preparing for a show that was supposed to open in Los Angeles at the beginning of April. Um, I made some of my largest works to date, uh, two canvases measuring 7.5 feet tall. The show was titled Bart Beethoven Wi-Fi. This body of work relates to the inheritance of culture and information as opposed to a monetary inheritance. And how do I experience and organize that wealth of information that I feel like I inherited as a second generation Mexican American woman. So I feel like my work is sort of like a remix of experiences from my perspective. Um, eventually the show was installed, but it never opened to the public because of the pandemic. Um, a project that was released for me this year was a collaboration that I did with Nike. It was part of the Nike Artist in Residency series. So I designed three t-shirts. Uh, they were released at the end of March in the UK and in the beginning of May in the US. Uh, I was excited to be able to put a brown body on one of the designs. Uh, so this design was based on a digital drawing I made in 2015. It's titled Slam Dunk. Uh, when I made this drawing, I never imagined that it would culminate in this project. I think this further reiterates my desire to make work for myself. I think that if it rings true to me, it will ring true to somebody else as well. So I also have a small online shop called BFGF, and I focus on designing functional art objects for the home and for everyday use. Uh, I really hope that this is a more accessible way for people to introduce art into their everyday life. The woven blankets can be used as functional textiles at home, or they can be taken to the beach on a picnic. Uh, they can also be framed or hung and used as large scale art pieces. I really enjoy seeing these pieces in interiors and commercial spaces like cafes, bars, and restaurants. I really like the marriage of function and beauty, especially when it's related to the idea of creating a personal space or a home. Currently, I'm trying to learn more about furniture design and production. I think that this further expands on the idea of bringing art into everyday life and it bridges the gap for me between art and design a little bit more. So in my practice, it's really important for me to allow myself to find inspiration everywhere. And for me, that means integrating my work and my life and tying them closely together. Uh, so thank you for listening. I hope that you found some information that was interesting.
and useful for your practice. Uh, give me a second to get back on. <laughs> Thanks, Lillian. That's amazing. Yeah, you can uh, stop uh, stop sharing whenever whenever you're ready. Um, we've got a couple of um, couple of questions here, which um, I mean, it just struck me as you were, as you were talking. Um, if you uh, hello, you're back. Hi. Um, yeah, what, it's something that struck me is you talked about being a kind of a late bloomer creatively. Um, and I think that's such an interesting thing because I, I'm sure lots of people feel like they're, you know, maybe not kind of, they haven't quite found their style or even their discipline maybe at a certain point in their careers. Um, I guess I was just kind of curious, what advice would you give to someone who feels like they might be a bit of a late bloomer perhaps and haven't quite found their, found their feet just yet? Uh, I would say to try and find work that you're happy with. Uh, that makes you feel good and to figure out ways to share it with people. Uh, don't be afraid to experiment. I think just continuing to make work allows you to figure out your style and what works for you. Like what works for you uh, might not work for other people. So don't compare yourself to anyone else because you don't know their experiences or what advantages or disadvantages they have had. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I think you do talk about kind of like finding your style there. I mean, one thing that strikes me about your work is that the color palette is so kind of unique and recognizably yours, I think. Um, how did you kind of develop that color palette? I mean, did you do a lot of experimentation before you found a, a palette that felt like it was the right, uh, yeah, I guess the, the right one for you? I mean, I did make a lot of work and I'm not a trained painter. So I was initially working just paints out colors and that were available, readily available. And as I started to make more work, I realized that I could alter these colors to colors that felt perfect for me. So I usually will add like white or a light gray to whatever color I'm using because I feel like it gives it a really nice sort of sun-kissed look, but it's still very vibrant and bold, but there's something peaceful about it to me. Okay. And just finally, I mean, I think, you know, one of the amazing things about your career is how you've gone from, you know, flat paintings, canvases to objects. And, you know, I guess, yeah, we talked about it a bit before, you know, pieces for body, but also for, for homes as well. Um, I guess, how have you managed that transition from doing stuff that kind of sits flat against the wall to, yeah, I guess, sitting on a, on a, on a chair, as we saw on that final image in your, in your presentation? It's really amazing. Well, actually, I... The way that I started drawing was on a computer digitally because it was sort of like an easier transition from doing photography and working digitally on the computer. It was more seamless, more approachable. And I actually started my shop before I started painting canvases. So that came first. Uh, so the transition was from drawing digitally and trying to figure out ways to present it. Um, and then I would feel more comfortable painting and drawing by hand. Fantastic. Sorry, I've been asking my own questions and I realize there's a, there's a question in the, here from the chat. So I'm just gonna ask you one more, which is, um, do you find your figures or the people in your, in your um, paintings, have they evolved at all through your process? Uh, yeah, I feel like they've gotten bigger and they've taken <laughs> up more space. I think about occupying space a lot and how do you occupy space that wasn't necessarily created for you, how do you do that comfortably? So I feel like that's part of sort of my process and my journey, a projection of that exploration onto my work. Fantastic. Lillian, thank you so much for an amazing presentation and also for, for your time with the questions as well. Um, you can now, yeah, turn your audio and video off and um, yeah, enjoy the rest of the event. <laughs>